Okay, hi there, welcome to a short video. Uh, many students spend a lot of time looking at supply side policies, and it's always a good idea to think back a stage to consider what are the main aims, what are the objectives of supply side economic policies. Well, this is the only slide in this presentation, so let's work through some of the key aims of policy. Uh, a lot of economists on the supply side think that uh, strategies should aim to improve incentives. So there we get a market-based idea. But for example, we might bring in policies designed to improve the incentive to look for and perhaps take paid work in the labour market. The incentive for both businesses and individuals to invest in their human capital. So incentives lies at the heart of supply side policies. Crucially, as we saw in a previous video, uh, supply side policies look to lift and improve uh, both absolute and relative productivity, productivity of labour and capital. So output per hour worked or the physical productivity of a new bit of capital machinery. Higher productivity can cause the production possibility frontier to shift outwards and ultimately can lift per capita incomes. Another really key aim of supply side policies is to improve the mobility of labour in the labour market, and in particular, to address occupational immobility. That's the barriers between moving between different jobs and also geographical immobility. The, the issues, the problems, the hurdles that people often face moving areas, moving to find work. So improving mobility of labour is a key aim. A fourth aim is to increase investment. Investment in new capital, in machinery, in technology, in buildings. And also, crucially, to try and lift research and development spending, often at a micro level. For example, to improve development spending, uh, research investment in pharmaceuticals or in, in renewable energy uh, or in the building industry, for example. OK, so lift R&D as a way of promoting and stimulating invention and innovation. And that links to the next point. Many supply side policies are designed to try to promote competition in markets and thereby stimulate a faster pace of innovation. Policies often try and encourage the startup and expansion of new businesses, particularly those kind of business startups that have export potential going forward. And more broadly, these last two points are kind of macroeconomics in essence. Supply side policies are trying to make a country more competitive in price and non-price terms in global markets, improve a country's competitiveness to drive exports and uh, to make a country more successful in, in a globalised world. If you can achieve these things, if supply side policies are effective, successful, then in theory, you can improve the trend rate of growth of GDP. You can increase potential national output and maybe increase your long term growth rate by a percentage point or two. And if your trend growth can go up, that uh, has the potential to lift per capita incomes and hopefully also achieve a better balance between different regions of a country. So these are some of the key aims of supply side policies. Uh, we'll go into some more granular detail about what those policies are, but fundamentally it's about raising productivity, driving innovation and improving the trend rate of growth. 